I'd be lying if I didn't say I was upset that it was only, I don't know, 50-something days, 57 days, I think it was, or however long it was. Uh, I, I said recently on the TV show that NXT was the best it ever was for the 57 days I was champion. <laughs> it was paradise. Chef's kiss. Hey there, everyone. Rick Uccino here again for Sports Keto Wrestling. And you WWE fans are more than aware who my guest is at this time. NXT Triple Crown winner. The only man to win the North American title three times and very well could be your next NXT champion. The leader of the way, Johnny Gargano. How are we doing good, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Thank you for the great introduction. I, I do what I can. I'm hanging in there. Like I mentioned, big matchup with Karrion Cross Tuesday night. But before we dive into that, I'll get right to the question that is on everybody's mind, I'm sure. Who does Johnny Gargano believe is really behind the TVA? Oh, boy, that's tough, man. Oh, boy. There's so many good theories around. And obviously, everyone wants it to be Kang, I think. Right. Everyone wants, but that's the way the story's going. It makes sense. For it to be kind of a, a King Loki, I guess, if you want really that, the dynamic of like, he didn't change and he just wanted to take control of everything. And then he has a fight. I, I That does make sense for like the journey he's been going on to where he would face the different version of himself that didn't meet Sylvie and like obviously never changed and didn't have this right. different feeling. Uh so I, obviously, I would like it to be Kang as well. I think just, we're just impatient because we want to see him already. Uh, yeah. But I guess story wise, a, a, another version of Loki would make sense. I mean, it's there's there's too many giant Easter eggs pointing for it to be Kang for it to actually be Kang, right? Yeah. Like they would, it, it's never obvious, and nothing in this entire series has been obvious. But I'm I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, to the finale coming out on Wednesday. I just wanted to get your gauge your, your no, thoughts on that. Anytime we can talk about this stuff, please. I can go all day. <laughs> so so can I, but I'm sure we have a limited amount I'm of like time. I'm like Captain here. America, man. I can do this all day. I was gonna did you did you have you seen uh uh Black Widow yet? I have not. So uh Candace was going out of town, so we made plans that we were gonna go see Black Widow the Wednesday after TV so I can actually you know eat popcorn and stuff because I don't have to ah. be half I don't have to be half naked on television. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to, we're going to go this Wednesday. So we're going to have a full jam packed day. Uh, we'll obviously have the low key finale in the morning and then black widow at a theater. We're actually going back to the movie theater for the first time in forever. So it's an exciting day and hopefully I'll have the NXT championship with me to make it even better. Yes. All right. Well, let's, I, I really liked black widow by the way. And there are some people out there who are giving it some, some negative reviews, but those people just hate life as, uh, as per the usual. Yes, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great send-off for uh, for Scarlet. So let's let's talk about some wrestling, I guess. Uh, you know, you're you're no stranger to facing uh, bigger opponents, but uh, in a match like this where you got a guy like Cross who has you by half a foot, close to 70 pounds, you know, do the creative juices just flow more when you're facing uh, a guy like that as opposed to a smaller guy? You know, Karrion Cross is just this monster. So it's like, how do you slay the monster? I pride myself on kind of fitting in any role going up against any style you put me in the ring with a cruiserweight i can wrestle that style you put me in the ring with a heavyweight i can wrestle that style you put me in a street fight i can wrestle that style so i really pride myself on being able to mix it up and do whatever is called upon me on that given night i've always obviously been inspired by smaller guys like daniel bryan and guys like Shawn michaels i, I I distinctly remember Shawn Michaels going up against Vader and Sid and Diesel. And I I love the David versus Goliath story that could potentially be told there. And yes, I think for me, it, it does make creative juices flow a little bit differently. But I, I guess in any environment, you know, when you have a bigger guy and a smaller guy, I think you can see some exciting things. Yeah, I was going to say, you know you're in for a fight, right? Like, you're going to get a ton of suplexes. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I've already felt him a few times. Uh, yeah, uh, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. And he throws them suplexes, man. And he hits you in the back of the head with that forearm. So I, I know I got a long night ahead of me. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be Johnny Wrestling if I, I didn't fully embrace that, right? Yes, absolutely. And we'll we'll get to that more here in a, in a little bit. But uh, you did have some choice words. Uh, for Mr. Cross at the uh, Great American Bash. A few zingers uh, in there. And I immediately saw people going nuts on Twitter like, the babyface <laughs> turn is complete. Is that the case? Or is this the ultimate underdog just back for, for this one feud here because it fits the story better? Uh, man, it's so tough because I think 
it's it's a unique environment because now we have a live crowd again, and you have to think my whole run as a heel, we haven't had a crowd. Like immediately when I turned, like everything went down, and I've been a, a heel for basically a, a year and a half now, but we haven't had fans. So now the fans are back, and obviously, and I'm very lucky that people seem to enjoy my work and people yeah. seem to enjoy me. Uh, so I, I guess like you can kind of slot me anywhere you want. It, it's really interesting now to watch the show and see guys like Adam Cole get cheered, see Tommaso get cheered, see me get cheered. And I think it just might come down to like, we've been the faces of NXT for a long time. We've, we've killed ourselves for that brand to try to put that brand on the map. And I think people just really respect what we've done. And like I said, I, I appreciate that. And it does make sense, obviously, for me go, going against Karrion Cross, who is the big bad. He is the, the big boss at the end of the video game. Uh, he's yeah. unbeatable. He's unstoppable for me to kind of go into that underdog Johnny Wrestling role. So it does make sense. And I think story-wise, it, it does fit the bill this time. All right, here's the obligatory Samoa Joe question. Uh, it, it's been so great, you know, to watch him work since he returned to NXT. He's a special guest referee in this match between yourself and Karrion Cross. What's it been like having Joe back on Tuesday nights and, and getting to work with him directly? Obviously, it's great, man. You, to have a mind like Samoa Joe, to have a guy like Samoa Joe, who is an absolute legend, uh, like, you can't replace what he knows and you can't replace his insight. And obviously, as a character, I think he's been he's been so fun to have on the show. Yes. And I, I I pitched that after you know he saved me from getting run over by a, a motor vehicle. Uh, that obviously there's a buddy cop movie in the future. <laughs> I think being Samoa Joe buddy cop movie, I think it writes itself. So I'm gonna keep pitching. I know we got a movie studio, so I'll see what I can do. I was, I was gonna like you got to get. Uh, we, we we've seen the the great skits that you guys have, have come up with. You got your mind has got to be racing. You got to constantly be pitching stuff like that, don't you? All the time. <laughs> they're, probably, <laughs> they're probably sick of me by now, but it's fun. And again, this is horrifying to say because you brought up like the babyface Johnny wrestling, and you know, like he's back. But like a lot of what you see on television now, the zingers and and the the skits and the segments, that's real life me, which is horrifying to say, really, when you think about it. Uh, any any of those after like you see the network exclusives of promos that me and me and uh, Candice and Austin Indy do a lot of it is just is literally just off the cuff and I'm trying to get Mackenzie or them to break like literally that's all that is so if you w- go back and watch them you can see it's just stuff that's stuff is flying on the right first time we did it with not Mackenzie uh, Mackenzie wasn't around so we had a different interviewer we had to give her a heads up like look. These are going to go off the rails, okay? This is going to go <laughs> wild. You just got to be ready. Just go with the punches for us. Let's dive back to, to May here a bit, uh, you know, talking about facing uh, bigger opponents. I thought your cage match with Bronson Reed was one of the better ones I've seen in, in quite some time. You took a fair share of punishment uh, in that match for sure. Was the, the splash off the cage as bad as you thought it was going to be? Oh, so, yeah. I mean, I've taken that splash a few times. Obviously, that, that is honestly not – the worst one that I've taken, the worst one from Bronson that I took was in the ladder match where Candice was actually on his back. Right. So that yeah. was an added extra. I don't want to say how much Candice weighs because she might get it. I don't know. She, could, she Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be in trouble. Uh, but yeah, that was the worst one that I think that I've ever taken. That just, he, we have a lot of big boys. And I mentioned Karrion Cross is a big boy, but Bronson Reed, Another big boy. Just who would have guessed? WB landed the big boys. Not <laughs> yeah. Not to be confused with the big boys play, but right. It's still land of the big boys. You know what though? Uh, I had a chance to talk to Bronson after that match. He told me you were the second person ever to power bomb him. You and Walter. Yeah. That's that's the list. So I mean, you got you got a feather in your cap there for something. But, <laughs> man, I mean that Walter. goes back. That goes back to the creativity, though, finding a way to, to get something like that done. See, you, you finding a way. See, now it all makes sense. You always yes. got to find a way to – that's why the thing is called the thing. Right, because, right. You know, it's, 
<laughs> ah, my, my lighting keeps going away here. All right. Uh, so we spoke, uh, you know, right after you won the North American title for the third time. You said you had big hopes, big plans for that title run. Um, you know, looking back on it now, was it as successful as you wanted it to be? Uh, I think for a different, for a couple different reasons. I brought up how I wanted to kind of just give other guys opportunity with me winning the North American Championship, and I think one of my big, one of my favorite things I was able to do is kind of have a long takeover match with Kushida and kind of put the spotlight on him and show everyone what he's capable of. Cause after that match, obviously like he won the cruiserweight title and obviously he's been, he's been highlighted now. Um, I just wanted to give other people a stage, give other people a platform. Uh, obviously like my stuff with Kushida, my stuff with Bronson, you know, I just want to try and make as many people as I possibly could and kind of shine the light on them. So in that regard, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm proud that I was able to kind of usher in a, a new era and, and give the spotlight to guys that I think deserve it. And now you find yourself, you know, back in the NXT uh, title picture. Um, you know, I took part of the uh, global press conference you had back before, you know, the big fatal five way. And uh, you had a couple lines the night, including one on my question where you told Adam Cole is going to be glad he knows a good dentist. I thought that was really, really good. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, you also said that your your NXT championship run was uh, an embarrassment. Was that was that a work or did that was there a little bit of truth in there? I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say I was upset that it was only – I don't know, what 50 something days, 57 days, I think it was, or however long it was. Uh, I, I said recently on the TV show that NXT was the best it ever was for the 57 days I was champion. It was paradise, <laughs> chef's kiss. Uh, but, you know, like we went on such a long emotional journey, and I, I get it. Like, especially for me, I guess, I just feel like I have another run in me. I feel like kind of in the same regard as the North American championship, where I just want the ball. But, and that just might just be me in my competitive nature where I always want the ball. I always want to want to be the guy to run as fast as he can in the end zone and score the touchdown for you. Uh, I think if you get into wrestling, you get in this business, you, you want that. That's what you go for always. Um, but I guess it makes sense given the Johnny wrestling story and Johnny wrestling arc that he, he fought so hard to get the title. He finally got the title. And then obviously Adam Cole, took it from him so story-wise it makes tons of sense but personally me being the the guy that i am i want the ball man and i want to be able to have the run that i would like to have one day right and you're one of the guys and you brought this up earlier that that has that that nxt longevity we know it's an ever-changing landscape i mean just in the last few weeks we've seen an influx of talent leave the the women's division uh heck we, we saw tegan knox show up at great american bash and then two days later you know she's at She's on SmackDown. I'm sure Candice had a had a reaction to that one. Uh, she's scared. Sure. Obviously, she's scared. <laughs> she just run in and battery gets full, and then she just causes Candice the titles and leaves because she doesn't want to deal with the repercussions. I mean, but I mean, is that something that you guys have kind of just grown accustomed to? The fact that the landscape can change it at any second, and that heck, who knows? The way could be split up tomorrow, for all you know. Yeah, and I'll cry. Uh, <laughs> I'll be so sad. Uh, yeah, man, you kind of got to roll with the punches. Uh, you've learned, I guess, to not get too attached to things because they could be going away uh, at a moment's notice. You just never know. Uh, so you just got to make the best of the time you have because, I mean, like we talked about, like anything could change tomorrow. Like the world could change tomorrow. We never know what sure. can happen. So make the best of the time you got. Uh, I'm going to make the best of the time I have with Austin and Indy uh, because I know that I firmly believe like they were handpicked by me and Candice because we know – they are the future of what we do. They have great attitudes. They have so much charisma, so much character, so much athletic ability. It looks like we made them in a freaking lab, man. Like I, I, I think the world of Austin and Indy, so we're going to make the, the best of the time we have with them because I think they are going to make this company a lot of money for a long time. I'm glad at least I could say thank you. Uh, my my and, pleasure, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was good. I had, and I had a bunch of more Marvel questions I wanted to ask you too. So, yeah, it's, we'll, we'll have to do it again. Well, Anytime, man. Any, tell, uh, just tell me you want to talk to me about Marvel. We'll do it anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I can do a whole podcast on Marvel. Trust let's, me. So. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thanks, dude.